Hello. In this section, we will cover food cost, recipe conversion, and nutrient analysis. This will be very helpful for your final um, assignment and also uh, moving forward in the professional life, if you go into food service or even managing any uh, dietetic services or programs. What is the definition of food production? Process of transforming raw ingredients into edible food products. So in other words, anything that is edible, anything that is prepared for food consumption, for human consumption, uh, goes through a process. And everything that we cook and everything that we prep goes through a process. So the correct name for processed foods is, um, or correct name for food that has been made for eating uh, human consumption is process. However, not all edible foods must be overly processed, right? So we call overly processed foods when we put additives, preservatives, synthetic shelf, life extensions such as fast food, service foods, um, and uh, the other ones that are, you know, don't, don't contain just fresh ingredients. So some of you might ask yourselves, like, you know, what do I do as a food service manager or what do I do when I graduate from my undergrad or or even your master's, right? And you want to go into food service. Actually, food service is one of the highest paid um, fields in the dietetics um, uh, field or profession. Why is it more uh, better paid? Because uh, there is a lot more to deal with. Also, there's a lot more expertise that goes into it. And also you have to deal with a, um, a large number of employees, right? And also is uh, a little more challenging to manage. Uh, you need more personnel in order to put your food service out there. But, you know, among all of that, um, the food service manager need to plan the meals, plan the meals for the facility or the company that they uh, play a role in. Also, the meals need to be well executed within timely needs. Uh, that means that a sense of urgency needs to happen here uh, to achieve your goals in the desired time. It's, you know, if you are going to have lunch ready at 11 a.m. for the entire facility that you're working for or that being, you know, three, five, 50, 180 people, you need to make sure that that food goes out on time and that is uh, all well executed. Also, your food cost must be kept within a budget. And it's just, it's not only food costs. It can be also uh, labor costs. It can be, um, equipment costs, it can be maintenance cost. So all of that needs to be well uh, kept within a budget so you don't uh, bring the place to bankruptcy. Uh, meals must be visually attractive and acceptable to the customer or the patient, right? To their taste, to their um, eyes, um, their texture on food, um, everything needs to play a role and the food service manager is responsible for all of this. Um, also, managers must learn to order food according to specifications. And if you ask for salmon that is wild, uh, you are not gonna, you know, if you advertise it's gonna be wild salmon, you are not gonna get farm raised salmon and sell it as such. Uh, there are regulations for that. If you are uh, claim that you are using grass-fed beef and you are using conventional beef, um, then that is also a false advertisement and you can get in big trouble for that. Um, you also have to know the right amount of in inventory that you need to fill the demand of your site. Because if you overly do it, uh, you will be putting that site on financial strain. 
and that is also a huge issue because uh, <clears throat> that makes you a really bad food manager. Uh, you are running over cost and over spending of your facility and um, you will eventually get fired. Why is knowing the cost of food so important? Well, the cost of ingredients that are going to make in a dish are it's, it's very essential. It's very essential to the bottom line. So to this, you need to also uh, know the cost of serving in order to selling it. So there are two types of food cost, right? Individual portions for each dish and also the overall food cost percentage. The individual, um, the uh, <clears throat> theoretical food cost is also called the individual portion. So you know how much each dish costs you and that will help you to figure out how much money you're gonna sell that dish for or um, how much money you're gonna need to produce it. The overall food cost percentage is based on the monthly cost of food compared to the sales or the income of resources that you will be getting. So it's like in any business, right? Any business for profit or not for profit, even at your own home, your budget can make you or break you. If you don't know your expenses, then and, and you are not able to compare them to your resources, then uh, you're going to run out of either you're going to run out of money really quickly or you're going to run out of food. Uh, and it's, you know, that neither of those things can be unbalanced, then you will fail as an administrator of a business or even your own home. So really quickly, actual overall food cost percentage. So this is determined by doing a physical inventory and comparing it to the actual sales or your um, resources and financial resources um many many places many restaurants do a monthly inventory sometimes it is weekly uh this is when uh is do usually doing week uh, done weekly when you feel that your budget and your food cost is getting out of control and just it's good to do it for about a month and then go back to a monthly, uh, weekly for about a month, and then go back to monthly after that. Um, so what is done during this process is that the person starts to count every single item in the kitchen, ingredients, uh, in the storage room, uh, and then, um, you know, ounce by ounce, and pound by pound, and unit by unit, and then, uh, put it into a spreadsheet, putting all the prices on, figure out how much money you have in the house. And that will help you to determine um, how much money uh, you are spending and also how much uh, of that product you are using. Um, how do you figure that out? Uh, you get your opening inventory amount plus your purchases. You add those two and then you uh, subtract the closing inventory and that will give you the cost of goods sold. That means how much money you spent in a month. Uh, the, 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 um, right here you can see the equation is OI, opening inventory, plus cost P, which is purchases, minus EI, um, which will be um, uh, ending inventory equal to actual costs. If you want to know the percentage, you will divide uh, your food cost into your food sales. And that will give you a food cost percentage. Normally, a good food cost percentage is 30%. If you go over 30%, you are over spending and or either that or wasting food in your kitchen, which can also drive your bottom line very low. So anatomy of a recipe. Let's talk about this really quickly because you should know how to write a recipe correctly. 
and also how to read it correctly. As you can see, hopefully you can, um, you know, just, um, just see here, you know, every recipe is going to have a title, right? Obviously. Uh, then their source attribution should be given to where you got that recipe from. Remember, we're going to give credit to, you know, what credit is due. And if you got that recipe from somebody other than your own brain, and then you need to credit that person. At least a little excerpt uh, is recommended. So here you can see that uh, in parentheses, it has uh, adapted by Lola's Kitchen. Uh, and then uh, this you um, is also always a good idea to write down equipment uh, needed. Uh, this will expedite things for the person executing your recipe, especially if you are in charge of food production and you have a bank of recipes in your uh, facility, your cook, uh, your chef that would be performing this recipe will know exactly what to get as far as equipment. Uh, then you also need to add your yield or the number of portions or the number of servings that you will be getting from this recipe. Then next, ingredients. The ingredients should be listed in the order that your recipe calls for. So if you're going to uh, fried something or you're going to like saute something with a little oil, your oil should be going first. Um, and then if you, the next step is chop three onions and two tomatoes, then that should be the second ingredient in the list, the second and third, and so on. Right? And then you go with instructions. Your instructions should be bulleted point and numbers so step one two three four five six seven as you will do when somebody's cooking your recipe you should always read your recipe before anything else right entire recipe don't just pull out the recipe at the moment that you're going to start cooking your dish and go from there because what's going to happen is that you're going to realize that there are uh, you need a certain equipment and then you're going to have to stop and get it you're going to need some uh ingredients that probably you don't even know that you, is listed there and then what do you do do you run to the supermarket at that moment do you run to the corner store at that moment so make sure that you have everything in place which is also another term uh used in kitchens which is miss and plus um and that is uh, uh, M-I-S-E-E-N-P-L-A-C-E. -E -E. That is a French term for everything in it is place. And lastly, right, you need to uh, write down a nutrition analysis, especially if you're going to be working, you're going to be working in a uh, rehabilitation facility or hospital. You need to make sure that the nutrition analysis is always in the recipe. Um, of course, you might not see all of these elements here in undergrad or even in class because uh, one of the objectives is for you, for us, for you to know how to write a recipe and what to look for and start getting your uh, senses uh, polished and as as far as um, you know reading the recipe, getting the equipment and so on. But when you are in charge of the kitchen, that should this should be already in, in the recipe. And also, lastly, right, make sure that the recipe is clear and legible. If you took the recipe from somewhere else or you brought your own recipe, read it again and make sure that it makes sense to you. If it makes sense to you, then it will make sense to other people. All right, now, how do we know how to uh, increase or decrease a recipe? It's done through a recipe conversion factor. This is very important. Um, it is the recipe conversion factor is a method to increase or decrease the yield of a recipe, right? Making more or less than what the original, original recipe costs uh, and will yield.
So how do we do this? Well, first thing, you take a look at the yield of the recipe that is to be adjusted. Let's say that you get a recipe from the internet that um, makes 40 muffins. I'm just making it up, right? 40 muffins and you want to make uh, 90. Um, so you need to know this formula in order to do that. Um, so the number of portions that you usually, um, the number of portions is that was included in the recipe. And that's the information that you have, right? It tells you that it makes 40 muffins. That's the information that you have. And then you're going to decide what yield you need. So if you need to make 90 muffins, that is the information that you need. So then you're going to obtain the conversion factor by dividing the required yield from step two and divided it by the old yield from step one. So in this case, will be 90 muffins that you need uh, divided by the, uh, the 40 muffins that the recipe uh, has been made for or calculated for. Uh, so what your result will be will be the conversion factor. And what you will do with that conversion factor um, will be to multiply the original recipe amounts by that factor, and it will give you a new amount. So let's say that uh, in this case, uh, you will need to find a conversion fa factor uh, to adjust a recipe that produces 25 portions and you want to produce 60 portions, right? So the recipe that you have uh, yields 25 portions and then you want to make 60 portions. Um, so the recipe yield is 25. Um, the required yield is 60. You will divide 60 into 25 and that will give you a conversion factor of 2.4. So that 2.4, we will multiply it by the amount of uh, on the ingredients <clears throat> uh, on the original recipe. So if you want, if you need a cup of flour uh, for the 25 portions, you will multiply that one cup of flour times 2.4. That will be equal to 2.4 cups of flour, right? Um, and uh, if you want to, uh, you need to convert it to the 0.4 into ounces in order to get a better, um, a, a more exact yield. So um, 0.4 uh, into 16 will be equal to 4, so it will be about 4 ounces. Now we're going to talk about cost in the recipe. So using the example on the recipe before uh, with the Durham Watt um, and its color greens with fresh ginger, tomatoes, red onions, um, we are going to, number one in column A, we're going to list all the ingredients that we need for that recipe, right? Then we're going to go to the supermarket and then we're going to buy the ingredients. And from that, we're going to get a receipt. Um, then let's say that you could not buy um, exactly what you needed for that recipe, right? Because sometimes it's not possible to do that. Like in the example of cooking oil, you are not going to, um, in column D, you, you see um, the amount per ingredient that we need to use, right? So you are not, you need four tablespoons for the recipe, but if you go to the supermarket or to the store, um, you are not going to purchase, be able to purchase four tablespoons of oil. So you're gonna have to uh, buy a bottle, right? Which is a 12 ounce bottle normally. Um, and a 12 ounces is equal to 24 tablespoons. How do I know this? I looked it up. Um, and uh, in the case of the color greens, uh, they said that the color greens were on sale to for three dollars. 
right? And you want to save a little money, you got four bunches, but you only going to use three. Um, and so on, right? Like tomatoes, you got two pounds and you only needed one because maybe the tomatoes were on sale and you wanted to have extra tomatoes for your home. So uh, column C, we're going to list the prices or the money that we spent. In this case, we spent a total of $25.95 when we went to the store. Maybe you already have some of these ingredients at home, right? Um, but, or let's just say that you are using this at work. And you want to know exactly how much your recipe is going to cost you. So uh, you uh, column D is exactly what you will use for the recipe. Remember, column B is what you bought. Column C is what you actually spent to your, in your trip to the market. So now we want to know how much money each dish is going to cost. And that's just, this is where we go to column E and F. So um, column E is the percentage amount that you use to execute that recipe, right? So as I said before, uh, you got four bunches on sale, but you're only gonna need, you're only gonna use three for your recipe. So do you add column D into column B to get the percentage of the amount that you used? In this case, colored greens, you only use three bunches. Three into four is 0.75, which is 75% of what uh, you bought. Same thing with the cooking oil, right? There are 24 spoon, uh, tablespoons in a bottle, 12 ounce bottle, and you want to, um, you're only going to use four tablespoons. So you're gonna divide four tablespoons into 24 and gives you a percentage of 0 0.16, which is 16%. You bought two tomato, two pounds of tomatoes because you wanted to have extra tomatoes after these four other days. Um, then you're going to use only, or you're going to use only one pound, need one pound for the recipe. Um, so divide one into two, and it gives you a 0 0.5, of means 50%. Red onion, you bought one pound, and you're going to need one use one pound of the recipe. So you use all of it. You use 100% of what you bought. Um, so to know how much money your recipe costs, you will um, multiply column C by the percentage column E. So is the amount of money that you bought that you spent at the market times the percentage of the item that you are using. And that will give you the cost amount use, which is the cost amount uh, per recipe. In this case, uh, for the column grease, yes, you spend six dollars, but in the recipe, you only you only use two dollars and twenty five cents out of that money. So even if you went to the supermarket and spend that day twenty five ninety five, in order to make this dish, only it's costing you eight dollars and forty one cents, right? And I think the recipe says that you will yield <clears throat> about um six portions so you will need very important you will need to divide 8.41 into six which is the yield of the recipe and that will give you the amount of money per portion that you spent always remember to convert to similar measures and equivalents right just because it had the same number and the same uh, name, like ounces, uh, it doesn't mean that it's the same, you're gonna yield the same or it's the same unit. Remember that ounces, there is ounces in weight, and there's also ounces in volume, which is mostly um, fluid ounces. Um, like 16 ounces per weight uh, on weight is one pound. 
and 16 ounces of volume is one pint or also half a quart. Always, always, always try to find the equivalents to also expedite the process. This also will help you with calculations. Like if a recipe, you know, if you know that you need 16 cups of water when you made that recipe, well, 16 cups of water will be equal to one gallon. So why not just write that down uh, or equal to four quarts, right? So if you have a gallon measure, you will be uh, faster filling up the gallon measure than counting 16 cups of water, right? That will definitely slow you down. 32 tablespoons of oil, something might call for that, or you might find out that you need 32 tablespoons for your recipe. Might as well just transform that into 16 ounces, which is equal to two cups. Right? It will be easier for the person to look for one cup measure than be sitting there and uh, measuring 32 tablespoons. 20 ounces of flour, right? It will be equal to one pound and four ounces and so on. So this will avoid spending so much time measuring and it also will help you when you break down your calculations. Now buying in bulk, when you buy ingredients in large amounts, such as like 50 pound bags of flour, right, it's gonna be cheaper for you. The cost of each service is gonna be less than when you just buy one pound of flour at a time, right? This is also assuming that you will be using that sense that pound, that fifty pound bag in a sensible amount of time before it goes stale, before it goes bad. Because if you're gonna buy fifty pounds of flour and it's gonna sit in your on your shelf or in the storeroom for a year, then that flour is not gonna be good. So it's gonna go to waste. But if you know that you're gonna use that flour in a reasonable amount of time. Just might as well, you'll save money doing that because a 50 pound, uh, 50 pound bag of flour might cost you $35 when one pound of flour is going to be uh, $2.25. So multiply that, right? If you buy 51 pounders uh, times 2.25, it's going to be definitely more than $35. Here's an example, right? We will make a muffin recipe that requires four ounces of flour each. So what would be the cost of flour per muffin? Uh, so one pound, uh, 50 pounds, a bag of flour would cost you $35. And you only need four ounce weight, not liquid, right? Or volume per muffin is four ounces of uh, weight. Uh, one pound is equal to 16 ounces. 50 pounds would be equal to 800 ounces. So you divide 800. I'm sorry, that would be equal to uh, 50 times 16 because each pound is 16 ounces. That will give you a total of 800 ounces uh, that you will get uh, in 50 pounds. So this is also helpful because this will tell you that you can also make 200 muffins with 50 pounds of flour because each muffin is going to, you're going to need four ounces for each muffin uh, in the recipe. This is also taken in consideration that you won't, you know, spill any or waste some or uh, burn some muffins, right? Um, so $35 that cost the bag of 50 pounds divided into 800 ounces brings you to about four cents per ounce. So you multiply that for four ounces uh, that you're gonna be using to make each muffin and uh, your cost of the flour, just the flour alone per muffins will be about 18 cents. Always remember to approximate if you have more than three decimals, right? numbers so always bring down to two uh and so based on this right is a question for you to think how much would it cost you if you 
purchase one pound of flour only to make your recipe. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more than 18 cents. When you cost your recipe, always remember to calculate the cost on free ingredient using your recipe, but you need to make sure that everything is in equivalent measures. Remember, there are two types of measurements, metric and English. So difference between milliliters and ounces, right? Ounces, cups, quarts, and gallon calculations need to be in the same measuring unit. Always remember that it's volume to volume and weight to weight. So using measuring equivalents, volume to volume or weight to weight. This is also, you know, what I mentioned in the slide before, remember that a cup in ounces is volume, right? Fluid, not ounces in weight. If you have a recipe that calls for one cup of flour and another recipe that calls for half a pound of flour, does not mean that both measure to 16 ounces, right? Neither they will yield equal. One cup, it will be equal to eight ounces. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. Half a pound is equal to eight ounces. So if you want to transform, if a recipe says uh, one cup of flour and you want to put everything into uh, weight, what I will do is that you take that cup of flour, grab a scale, put the the um, uh, the what you can fit in one cup and weigh it. Put it on the scale, weigh it, take that um that measure down and put everything uh change the resume instead of saying one cup, uh change it to what one cup of flour will weigh. So volume right into weight. And that in that way you will uh have a better uh, execution of your recipe if you give it to somebody in your facility that is making food it will be easier for them because they will be able to be more accurate on the measurements remember baking is very different than cooking baking always have to be exact so metric system system is more exact than the english system why because it's more precise uh, something conver sometimes converting measures from the English to the metric system may simplify your life. That's your call. Uh, let's say that jar of vanilla extra that you buy in the supermarket normally has two ounces. Let's say that your recipe requires one eighth of a teaspoon, right? Sometimes it's really hard to get or hard to measure. So you know, if you look for any conversion table online, it will tell you that one teaspoon is equal to 0 0.166 fluid ounces. But also it will tell you that one teaspoon is also equal to 4.928 milliliters, right? That would be easier to measure or to understand than 0 0.166. So how many times can you make your recipe with two ounces right that will be uh you will be able to um measure that with more simplicity and probably more accuracy a normal uh, now uh, let's talk about portions portions a normal portion of protein between four to six ounces right that is how much uh you should be actually serving that's that's what a normal portion of protein will uh, the size will be. And a cup of vegetables per portion is always um, customary to serve. Right? One cup of vegetables in a dish is, 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 is reasonable, is enough. And about, about half of a cup of grains, uh, cooked grains, is recommended. Normally, remember this, you will lose about 30% of cooked, uh, pre-cooked weight during the cooking process, right? On proteins and vegetables. Why you will lose 30% is losing water, losing moisture, losing 
uh, fat, volume, all that, when you are uh, cooking it, you will lose 30%. What that's supposed to mean? That you owe every time that you buy uh, your ingredients, you will be calculating always about 30% over that. So just as an example, if you want to make 30 burgers, four ounces each, you will need to add 30% weight when you purchase that meat. So um, you're going to multiply 30 times four, four ounces each party, um, and you want to serve 30 people, uh, you will need 120 ounces plus the 30% that is lost during cooking. Right, so you do that calculation is going to give you about 156 ounces, which comes out to about 9.75 pounds of ground meat to purchase to serve four ounce parties. I will actually go to you know 10 pounds instead of 9.75 just to be on the safe side. Um, and um, and also remember that grains will normally double on volume dry. Uh, versus cooked. So if you have a cup of rice, you will wind up with two cups of rice after it's cooked. I usually, and has never failed me, to use two parts of liquid per one pound of rice. This is the regular rice. If it is brown rice, it's going to take more liquid than normal. But things like jasmine or um, basmati rice, White rice uh, is usually two liquid to one rice. So two cups of liquid to one cup of rice. Nutrient analysis. When you are um, calculating your nutrient analysis, you need to make sure that you enter all the ingredients of the recipe one by one with the measures in. Um, when, uh, if some ingredients are not available in the nutrition calculator tool, look for something that so you can substitute that ingredient that is recognized by the uh, measuring tool, right? And this is also called a substitution. And a substitution of ingredient could be also uh, using a non-glutinous flour for somebody that is gluten intolerant or is um, has celiac and substitute that flour for something else that is not glutinous. Now, you have to remember to put enter the number of portions that you yield into a nutrition calculation tool. Do not leave this at one right? Do not leave this portion numbers of one because it will give you an entire calculation for the recipe, not for per portion. And you want to give your clients or you want to give your cooks the calories per portion in order for you to know exactly what you're feeding each client. So remember, please always try, always remember to put the nutrient analysis um, in the nutrient analysis tool, the number of portions in order, the, the, the nutritional analysis tool is going to automatically break it into portions from that recipe. And it will give you the value of nutrient analysis calculated on that. Now, quickly, let's talk about macronutrients. Um, you will need to calculate macronutrients. Remember, right? If you, this is, I uh, believe it's uh, an early um, knowledge that you should have, is that one gram of fat is equal to nine calories, carbohydrates and proteins, four calories, alcohol is seven calories. And so to calculate the number of calories for each portion, on macronutrients, you will need to divide the total grams of each macro in the recipe by the number of portion deal. Then using your nutrition measuring tool te to result, you will calculate the number of calories per each macronutrient. All right. So if you have 18 grams of fat and each gram is equal to 9 calories, 
So that would be equal to um you would be uh, multiplying nine times eighteen to get the amount of calories that you have on that dish. And then um if you calculate that whole thing uh, that amount of calories for the entire dish, make sure you divide that into a number of portions that you're getting from that dish, from that recipe. So you will find this presentation very helpful for your final meal project, especially for a 220 class and uh, some uh, master class also. Um, and also, you know, keep this as a reference to uh, you said in your professional life after graduation, you, we don't know where life will take you. You might be managing a huge facility with a lot of people uh, in uh, some part of your life. Maybe, maybe not. We never know. And you, all these calculations will be coming handy um, in the future. If you have any questions, please reach out or schedule a meeting with me during office hours. I wish you the best. And my name is Mario Landa Verde, uh, Master of Science at the NCDN. I have been a chef for a long time. It's my pleasure to help you. Bye.